All right, back for round one. Um, I don't know if I said this in my intro, but uh, I don't have the webcam up yet, but I'll probably put it up later, assuming I make a deep run, which is a pretty big assumption. This pool is, it's interesting, but it has a lot of moving parts. We'll see. But for now, I just woke up and I'm not gonna put the webcam on. Pretty easy keep. We're just gonna have to like keep hands like this and, and draw what draw our mana properly. Pretty much all day, if we wanna win this thing. you expect to see in sealed very often especially from a deck with all the colors excuse me all the colors of the rainbow something I can kill Ugh. white not quite I really needed him to like play a morph so I could douse untap scavenger here. Doesn't he realize he's inconveniencing me? This guy with his fancy lands. Alright, I need a swamp or a plains. Play something I can douse. Uh oh, nightmare. Collateral damage would also be nice. Um, I guess that's okay. on the side I have it muted so it won't uh, mess up the recordings but there's two GPs and an SCG going on as well as a Scandinavian open but um, sadly that as much as I actually enjoy watching the, those tournaments. Wow, no attack is really good for us. I don't think we could have blocked. Uh, the competition is just too high. Pass with five up. This is probably Ethereal Ambush. If I had to guess... Because he didn't want to trade this, so he clearly has a plan for this. Problem is, I kind of need the loot. Worst card in my hand is actually Rough Rider, as weird as that sounds. Alright. Alright, that's pretty good, since he's obviously trading or doing something to this board, too. Yep.
He snap blocked with the manifest instead of really taking a second to look at both manifests, which makes me think that they're both lands. Or spells, I mean. Not creatures. Bathe. Interesting. Good to know about at the very least. Delving something. Brad Nelson versus Alex Magneton at 9 0. Grand Prix Memphis. Pretty cool. Cut? Wow. Wow, was it was a creature. Bad read by me. It's good to make note of those things just so that you're like, okay, well, I should go with my instincts on my reads against this guy because he has uh, play patterns that I'm acclimated to versus the alternative. Even if there are relevant things like that, it's just good to know whether your uh, intuition is in tune with your opponent or not. So I'm always trying to be conscious of those things. I will choose not to block. I don't think we were winning this game no matter what, because he went five lands, all spells, which makes it really hard to win. Uh, collateral damage would be nice, though. Or planes. Heal cutter not as much. Um, I guess it's worth showing him heal cutter to try and get another spell out of him. It's like, I'll show you Heal Cutter to see some percentage of another card. I have to block like this. Uh, double abs again. Alright. This guy's the expert again. I mean, this person's... I need to stop gendering my opponent. Uh, too little, too late. Oh, wait! No, it's not! Because I gain life from this. Is it worth showing him? You can gain four up to five collateral damage to the Kirin. Then I'm at five... Effective one against mandrels and all of his mana. Yeah, there's, there's no way out. I'm not. I don't want to show him act collateral damage. Showing him a random heal cutter is not too damning, but act collateral damage is like a pretty big swing that I don't necessarily want him to know about. All right, so we know our mana is bad, and if we don't draw it, we're going to lose. Um, smite against double abs and guide hooting mandrels, I guess. I already have a lot of removal, but a lot of it is like shocks. You probably want to smite. Just 
just uh, upgrade smite into douse or douse into smite. Um, don't want to go up to AC lands on the play. Especially in a matchup like this. I don't think I can afford to. I really wish I had a couple more creatures. Like, I would love to be able to cut Vault Breaker in this matchup, but I just can't. Hopefully we play against, like, the Valley Dasher Blitz deck and can just board in a bunch of clerics. That'd be sweet. But until then... Alright, good mana and uh, an unfettered construct. strikes back happening right now. Wesco versus Fennel. Wesco on the plays. Like Elf into Karyatid tap land. Oh man, they cut away from the match. Back to Brad and Alex. Alex is up a game. We went Fleece Main, Glare, Read the Bones, Snap Bottom both. For bread, it's, it's a abs and mirror. The read the bones plan is super robust. Let's go, Kexi. All right, they mulligan. That's gonna help. Five, 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 five. Just shameless. Uh, I had to think for a second if we had any like chiefs or anything. For me to play the right land. God, Tasker is busted. I think it was Marshall said it was like unplayable and constructed. It's just quietly the best card in the set for constructed. It's played in every format. <laughs> Look at this guy's lands. Just an embarrassment of riches. I want to play the planes there because I can represent like a charm here. So he might play his second best creature instead of his best creature, which is just like a little pump the brakes motion or option, which is good because we could use the extra time. I should have played a swamp instead of second mountain there. Go ahead and send. Kept a five lander and have drawn two spells, two lands so far. So we're going to have to fix that a little if we want to compete. So much life gain. Look at this. I hit him for four and we're tied. fast, as they say. If 
wants to trade the Kirin for a dashed heel cutter. Let him. I don't want him to trade a crappy morph for it. The third toughness, the flying, the vigilance, it's way more annoying. Hopefully he'll just invest all of his mana into flipping up an Abzan guide to try and race and we can smite and put the race back in our favor. If I had to guess, I would say the first morph is a lot worse because I passed with three mana, all three colors. Definitely should have just sent with both here, surely. Very interested in what this play is. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Another play? Uh, woof. Again, should definitely play that first. Some basic sequencing mistakes. But my opponent, again, going five lands, all spells. Six lands, all spells, I guess. Scavenger is strong. Scavenger is very strong. Hmm. <laughs> Have to make this not block. Chump or gang? He should gang block. Either put both of these on the Rough Rider or all three of these on the Construct. Chumping doesn't get him anywhere here. I guess his Morph and or Manifest are really good if he's just chumping here. Curious, curious, curious. See at the land for the Rummager. Tax, no plays. No land drop. Huh. That's a good draw. Did my audio cut out? No. Weird. Sound just stopped on the video, on the uh, coverage, I mean. Anyway. Kind of tempted to just play Siege and pass. Attacking with Scavenger. Let's him on more. Sagu Archers isn't even a problem. I don't know if you unmorph for six, that really gets me here. Not much. Alright. Scavenger in. I don't want to throw all this stuff into combat because I want to play Siege this turn. I want to have Smite up. I want more time. I don't want to let him use his mana. Etc. 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 Well, he just snap takes it. Alright. Hopefully this is lights out. Drains is dragons. Alliteration. A mnemonic, if you will. A mnemonic. The Pup Abs and Guide. Yep. Wow, it was the first morph. My reads on this Kexi character. I mean, it's probably that they're both Abs and Guides, but the point remains. The point also remains that the audio is not working on this. The chat is not complaining about the audio. 
So it's definitely on my end. Tilt, 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 tilt. Kexi is waiting for me to respond. There we go, the audio's back. I just had to refresh twice. I got the doo doo sound of the USB unplugging, but then checked OBS and my mic was still plugged in, which the mic is what I'm running my audio through. I would suggest attacking with the Abzan guide if you don't want to die. And just going to block with construct. Huh. Horde color attacks? What is this attack? This is bizarre. Maybe I'm supposed to just not block so I can hold up smite for the combat trick. I could put construct on horde collar, but that makes my smite plan for the next turn bad if the combat trick does go off. I don't want to lose construct when I can block the abs end guide, force the trick, and then smite. If I block the abs end guide with the Rough Rider, he could just not cast this trick. And I really have to apologize for gendering my opponent as male. I'm just, I'm so tired. I'm generally very good about that, but... Uh, something I've been thinking about, you know, gendering opponents on stream and stuff. Generally pretty good about it, but I think that... Um, a really good way to do it is, first of all, if their screen name is blatantly female, then just she works. But also, I think uh, if it's generic, like Kexi, there's no way to tell. Um, pause that thought process while I consider my blocks. <sighs> all the mana, it could be anything. Even though he's five colors, uh, I'm committing to my opponent being male, by the way. Even though he's five colors, usually when they're five colors, you can eliminate certain cards. Like, well, he's five colors, so he's not going to play something, some mediocre trick like um, Dragon Scale Boon or Awaken the Bear. Or um, like Trumpet Blast in his control deck. But he also played a Whirlwind Adept which is a card you wouldn't expect to see in five colors. So really his range is just super wide. But like Trumpet Blast, War Flare, those types of cards, don't do it with Construct on two or three. But I don't want to risk my Construct to like Awaken the Bear when I have Smite up. I guess I just take it. Just take it and let Palace Siege do its thing. Ooh, something smells really good. My roommates must be making some breakfast for themselves. That's a good draw. Makes my life a lot easier. Probably Probably Alpha now. I was just gonna take the conservative route with attack with just Scavenger and leave Construct. Or maybe Scavenger Rough Rider, Rough Ride the Morph. But with three more points of reach. I think I can get away with just bashing. This cannot block. 
since it is likely a second Abzan god, or potentially could be a second Abzan god. I suppose if we're talking in potentials, the manifest could also be Abzan god, but the morph is far more likely. I think the only two morphs we saw last game were the two Abzan guides. And uh, Bathe in Dragonfire is what got manifested. Whirlwind Adept was milled or manifested and killed. I will pass priority with Well Over Lethal. Needs two removal spells here, basically. Look at these boards that happened in standard. You seeing this? Both sides having like eight creatures. There's the hand. I can't, like, if you come into the match at this point, how do you parse this board? How do you just, like, I don't know. It's hard to grok immediately, you know? Like, 21 to 26, both sides have eight creatures. And two planeswalkers and an enchantment each. It's just outrageous. Six lands, three cards in hand. It's very, very different magic than um, the game that I, you know, played when I was first starting. A whole new world, as they say. Channel harm. Well, channel harm targets, right? So So I can counter it by sacking. I, I believe. That is my understanding. But these two are lethal anyway, so there's no need to risk like doming with the collateral damage, for example. Ponyback Brigade. Alright, let's get to know about it, I suppose. Okay, good. Whew. I'm glad that worked the way I thought it did. Island was the morph, or the, uh, manifest. Okay. Channel harm. Five color channel harm. Pony back. Ugh. This matchup seems like a nightmare. Really hope we just draw Siege again next game. this match it's again an, it's another one of these boards both sides have just 20 creatures Wesco's well, like playing lands from the top of his deck and gaining life and blah 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 and the card in Wesco's hand that he, he just drew for turn we saw from Corsair was Dictate of Heliod these are the games that are happening in standard right now you under, do you understand how absurd that is When I first like started playing standard, if three creatures were in play, you got laughed at for overextending as they wildfired your board. Outrageous. I'm not saying it's necessarily worse. I just find it humorous how uh, different it is.
cut is so insane in this matchup. I hope I draw that card too. Crackling Doom. I have a lot of good cards in this matchup. I will say that much. He's got enough morphs that I want these douses, or at least one of them. I just don't know what to cut, because all my cards are good. Can't really cut a creature. I mean, I guess I can. Cut like this thing. No. No, this thing's worse. I don't know if I submitted. I, I didn't realize the time was so low. My game audio is off, so it didn't make any noise. It said submission received, but I have no idea. The sand is great, but it's pretty clear how we're going to lose. <laughs> It's one thing that um, is a good exercise is when you see your opening hand and then again on turn three and then again on turn like eight, visualize how you're going to win and how you're going to lose. All right, all right. Um, anyway, that it's a good mental exercise that lets you get really good at um, visualizing uh, sort of potential end game positions and formulating plans. Uh yeah, I'll play a free. Less likely to need to executioner on curve when I have wild slash. Plus even if I do wanna executioner on curve, I can still just draw an untapped land. Like forty percent of the time or whatever. Ooh, that's a great draw too. Alright. As weird as it sounds, I actually want this game to go long because I have Siege Executioner. Which hopefully will be pretty hard to beat. Although I sieged him out game two, so he probably boarded in and he naturalizes he has. He's jund this game, which means he's missing two colors. Despite having like ten tap lands. Douse. Douse is okay. Hunt the weak would have been a disaster, because then my wild slash doesn't work. Um, I'll say Executioner is worth more than a free. And I kind of want to keep the wild slash for now. Maybe not. Wild Slash this means that my Executioner could hit like a 5 drop. It's pretty mana inefficient, but I don't mind it. If I go attack with a free play Executioner, I'll have 2 cards in my yard. Which means a land would mean I could play Scavenger without even trading. And then without drawing a land, I can trade and play Scavenger. Wild Slash is free in those situations. Yeah, I think it's Executioner. Um, problem is, Executioner is going to be really good against this deck, whereas Slash is not necessarily going to have any more targets. Because he could just start jamming like Mandrill's face up. Or Mandrill's, or like Absent Guide's face up, even though he's missing colors. Um, on the other hand, Executioner is really bad against Ambush, although I guess so is Slash. Tough call. Very tough call. Alright, I think I'm going to go with Slash though. It's close, definitely close.
Boop. Abzan guide. Ah, oh, that's it's two other colors. Look at that draw. Ah, oh, how good is that draw? All right, here's Hootie McBlowfish. Good thing we sequenced this properly. Land is a good draw for us as well. Maybe we smite. Yeah, let's be mana efficient. Um, actually, no. I take that back. Executioner is a lot worse against Ambush. And he just drew the card to play Ambush. Though Smite leaves me with Executioner for um, Sagumaler or Slumgar. But even in those corner case scenarios, I have Palace Siege to rebuy it, which will hopefully be fast enough. Alright, what's better, a 3-1 or a 2-2 two, two and 2 damage? Because I get to attack with this, but not this. I'm going to say a 3-1. Is worth more. I'm running a little low on time, so I'm gonna have to play a little faster. Not super low on time, but low enough that, like, if I palace, if the game type ends up being, um, Palace Siege on Khan's Merciless Executioner, then the game's gonna go really long and I have to have enough time on my clock to actually close it out, so I will try and play a little faster. Jeez. Five lands all spells once again for the opponent. Sixth land, soul summons is not great. Nor is that. Just say it's way worse than just blocking the sandbar. But now we know his manifest is a brick, which is nice. I don't know naturalizing step. As long as we can fade like an erase or absent advantage here, I think we just win. Seventh land. Yeah. All right. Value. Guess Pony Back Brigade could get him back in this. One, two, three, four. I kind of want to hold the land because I don't want to get mind rotted for two removal spells. But at the same time, I want to leave at least the bondkin in my yard. Alright. I'm going to want to do two things in a, in a turn later down the road anyway. Just hope to fade a mind rod. I mean, it would have to be a mind rod into Ponyback into more threats. So, I mean, I put us at like 90% to win the game, but... That is one of the potential ways we could lose. Um, I'll get Bondkin so I can just play it this turn. I 
call this the soft lock. The abyss. Ooh, fancy. I'll outlast once. Sorry, I'm not talking much, it's kind of boring, but I'm very tired, so you'll have to excuse me. Monastery Siege, probably too little to wait. Jesus, this thing's filthy. Check this shit out. I have so many abysses going. Too many abysses. I thought abyss was a global enchantment. You could only have one. Honestly, it was probably correct to just play Executioner there. Not show him the Crackling Doom. Case I play against his buddy in a later round, but it matters so little. Wow, is he about to time warp me? What is this? Oh, dig through time, that makes more sense. He also only has two blue sources, so he can't time warp. Let's do the time warp again. That's what my iTunes needs. I'm gonna get on that. Get some little shop of horrors too while I'm at it. Digging through time. Even even if he hits like Doom Blast, it's just dead to the Crackling Doom. And the Palace Siege, getting back threats every turn. My deck is great when it works, when it hits its mana and some of its combos. I mean, we even missed the fifth land drop for a few turns, which hampered our development slightly, but. Like, our opponent ended up flooding out a little, but after the point where it would have mattered. Wins the match. 1-0. Be back for round two.